I'm going to cover the Dangerous Mastering Console, which is the summary of three units, the Dangerous MQ, the Dangerous uh, Monitor, and the Dangerous Master. You know, when you look at it from a workflow perspective, you've got a source that you want to play, you've got processing that you want to apply to that track as it goes through the, you know, the signal path, you want to capture that, you want to be able to compare of that source to the destination in real time so that can help you with your decision making process. Uh, again, you know, if you think about your clients being here in the studio, time is money. They're looking at the clock, you know, you're, lo you're looking at the clock as well because everyone's conscious of budgets now more than they've ever been in the past. So you want a tool that's going to help you work smoothly, effectively, be able to demonstrate the results to your clients in the studio in real time. Uh, and that's what I think this particular product solves in many different ways that I'm going to show you. Uh, the Dangerous Monitor handles all of your monitoring functions, both for, in my case, you know, I'm using it for my source playback, my analog monitoring while I'm doing the mastering. And then another beautiful thing about this product, it has a built-in DA converter on board. And when you're feeding this DA source, you're monitoring off of the built-in converter. So if you think about mastering as a discipline, you always want to compare your source and destination off of the same converter. Similarly, when you're going DA and AD, you're imparting color and also other uh, phenomenon from your converters themselves. And, you know, the, the converter they've got in here, I find is more of a reference converter and that's what I use it for. But what I love about the fact that they have a converter in here is that I can do a true round trip A to B comparison using the same converter. Uh, we get down to the Dangerous Master, this is your uh, routing controller, you know, your signal flow management, and when you're in the analog domain, has some other cool features that I'm going to show you as we go through. So let's just start playing a track, and then I'll show you kind of a workflow, and then we'll touch a little bit on this new product and go in deeper into that, which is the, the Dangerous Bax EQ. The one uh, unique insert is insert two, and there's this button here called the S&M switch. Um, Stereo and mono, uh, also known as sum and difference, also known as mid-side. If the side and middle switch is depressed, then that activates um, the matrix, the sum and difference matrix. So you create from stereo. If you think about stereo being the collection of these stems, you know, a mono stem and a stereo stem, with a sum and difference a decoder, encoder, you can take those stems apart and make two, two discrete mono stems, one being your mono stem, one being your stereo in mono. Uh, what's great about this, the collection of these three units together is by canceling out, hitting the mono button, and then inverting phase on one channel, now I'm hearing just the sides with the mono cancel, you know, or this, if you will. I go back here, now we're hearing mono. I take out mono, now we're hearing stereo again. So that's pretty cool because I can check out what's going on in the, in the sides. You know, I could use a meter to do something like that, like a spectral analyzer, etc. But I can also just listen. Why would you want to hear it? It's really common that there's, you know, extraneous amounts of low-end reverb or some, maybe an instrument that you want to bring up. Maybe uh, apply a little more gain to the sides to get a little more width. You know, there's lots of tricks you can do in the side channel. Coming back to why that's cool in the Dangerous Master is with the uh, sides and middle switch depressed, you engage that uh, sum and difference matrix there with or without the insert path in. So let's just talk about it in for the moment. So if you've got this button down and you've got this insert path in, then you create that matrix of your two mono stems, one going out to the mono stem, one going out to the stereo stem, which you can then process individually as like left and right if you think about an EQ. Bring that back in, fold it back in, and you can uh, collapse or expand the stereo image of that matrix with this uh, knob right here, you know, the uh, S&M width uh, knob. So right now what I've got patched in on, on insert one is an EQ and a compressor. So the EQ is the Bax EQ, so why don't we talk about that for a few minutes. Um, this is a new product from Dangerous, and it's based on the Bax Handle uh, EQ model, which is, think of it as a hi-fi stereo model, where you've got uh, cut and boost shelves and also filters surrounding the high and low end, so you can, you can create a very unique curve by using these shells interactively to boost and cut. So it's not like a parametric EQ where you're centering around a frequency and doing boost and cuts. You're finding a, uh, an area within the frequency spectrum where your shelf is going to start, and then as these shells interact, you get more or less mid-range, more or less bass, more or less high end as you know, the, filters, or the shells are interacting on boosts and cuts, and then your filters on the sides will then round out because the shelf may keep going up, but you want to take some of that down. And if you think about low end, we can you know, take off some uh, DC offset with a very low filter. And we can also remove uh, with the high, 
the high, sh uh, the high filter, we can also take off some unnecessary, let's say aliasing, which is going to just cause problems on the AD stage coming in, which actually I was telling Bob earlier today, I'm seeing aliasing problems is, is starting to become on the rise. Usually over 20K, it's nothing that anyone can see, but it shows up on the meter. And I've been using uh, digital filters in the past, but I'm finding that this thing sounds a lot sweeter, so I'm now preferring to do it with the, with the backs. So now we're going to go into insert two. We're going to do some uh, uh, side and middle processing, or mid side, if you will. So I've got the switch down. I've got my GML 9500 hooked up for this case. And again, if we just kind of listen to this track, what do I want to do to it? So let's monitor the sides. Here's our sides. Okay. What am I hearing? You know, well, okay. There's a lot of, you know, kind of a honky mid-range in there, you know, doing that thing. What's nice about these two units combined is I've got a unit hooked up in some indifference, so I can process mono and stereo EQ independently with this matrix. But I can also, what's really more important is I can monitor the sides in the middle independently. So I can make those choices while I'm hearing things discreetly. So that's out. In. So you're not hearing this gigantic 12 dB boost across all of bass because I'm only doing it in the side channel. So if you wanted to get a little more width and thump out of the low end, that's a way to do it. More commonly what I find is that you're going to get an extraneous amount of reverb and maybe some crazy low end reverb happening in the side and that's where you know a, a filter would be great or you know maybe a shelf or something else just to kind of help shape that kind of reverb and get a little more uh, cleanliness because you can get a little more power out of that track that way by getting rid of some of that extra energy in the low end on the sides but keeping the bass big in the center channel you know again this flexibility allows me to do very finely targeted eq and I'm not having to worry about how it affects so many instruments because I can really get in and deal with individual instruments or how it, the effects happen on the sides. You know, I don't really like to call this a piece of gear. I like to call it a solution because that's what it is. I mean, it is allowing you to effectively do your job in so much more of an effective way